Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back to another great ep episode. I trust everyone is doing well. How was your day? I hope you had a great day. We have another great show today, and we'll be discussing something very critical. Uh, it's a very uh, sensitive topic, but I have a professional in the house that I believe would do justice to this topic, and I pray that it will be a blessing to you, that God will open you up to receive what he has packaged in this conversation today. I, um, we, we, we are ready for what God will do, and I, I just pray that God will take all the glory, which he always does, and I pray that you will receive um, from this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen, amen. So uh, my special guest is a board-certified psychiatrist, um, is a nurse practitioner whose aim is to always provide client-centered care and treatments based on evidence-based guidelines by diagnosing according to the latest edition of the DSM and listening to the client's concerns and symptoms. So without any further ado, I'll go ahead and introduce my uh, guest. Please help me welcome the very, very special Dr. Yeside Ojo. Yay. Welcome. Hello. welcome. Hello. Thank you. How are you? I am doing so well. Thank you for the special invitation. I am so honored to be here today to, uh, to speak on a very important and sensitive, sensitive topic that you mentioned earlier, previously, mental health. Yes, yes. So thank you. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I um, I, um, I told some of our, our girlfriends that we'll, I'll be <laughs> interviewing you today. So they were kind enough to send me some questions. So um, I told them I'll be chatting with you. So and I'm like, oh, wait a minute, I'm not sure what to ask. So they sent some questions. And, uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> and so I honestly want to say thank you to my girlfriends. And um, I appreciate I appreciate them. I love, love, love them. But before we get into it, I was honored to attend your reading cutting cutting for your um, for your practice. And you spoke so eloquently about your passion and why you do what you do. So can you tell us about yourself and you know why you why you do what you do to help others? If you can Definitely. introduce yourself to us. Yes, De yes. Definitely, definitely. So my name is Dr. Yuside Ojo. I am a doctoral prepared nurse practitioner and a board certified nurse practitioner in psychiatry and family medicine. Um, I received my bachelor's degree in nursing from Howard University, HU, in 2005. And I worked as a bedside RN for at least over seven, over 10 years in various settings, um, such as hospital setting. I've done the um, outpatient setting. I've done rehabilitation setting nursing homes, you name it. Um, I've always known, you know, that I wanted to treat my patients. I wanted to have the autonomy to treat my patients. I wanted to be able to direct the plan of care when it comes to taking care of my patients. And I knew the only way to do that is to further my education as a, um, as a, um, as a nurse, meaning that going back to school and obtaining my, um, my master's degree, and which I did from Simmons University, Simmons College in Boston. I earned a master's in nursing certification as a family nurse practitioner in 2016. Post-graduation, I worked at a subacute rehab facility as an advanced nurse practitioner. Um, my experience there actually illustrated like the big gap between medical and psychiatric care and how the mind and body connection was often ignored in that setting, right? This gap is what actually encouraged me to pursue a psychiatric health, mental health um, certification at Brenman University, and I graduated in 2019. Post-graduation, um, I also worked as a psychiatric nurse practitioner in a community clinic in Baltimore for over two years. Um, having working with that population, it just opened up my, you know, opened up my eyes to there's so much of a need as far as mental health in our population, in the minority population. Um, overall, that actually gingered me to say, okay, I need to open up my own private practice. And like um, Joyce stated earlier, she was actually there physically when I did the opening and the ribbon cut in February of this year. So um, I opened up my own practice, Novum Wellness Center. Novum in Latin means a new beginning. 
mental health, there's always a new beginning. There's hope that keeps us going and keeps us, you know, knowing that there is hope for another day and hope for the future. Um, as Joyce has stated earlier, I am able to manage and treat several mental health disorders across the lifespan um, to include depression, anxiety, ADHD, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, you name it. Um, neurocognitive disorder and substance abuse um, disorder. So across the lifespan, I mean, from age zero to 100 years old. I haven't come across anybody age zero yet, but um, we're able to treat that. Yes, yes. So I know uh, mental health, it's a very sensitive issue and um, or topic, if you will. So what are, what are, what are some physical symptoms of mental health? Oh, definitely. Um, mental health illness, yes. Yes. Oh, definitely. You know, a lot of people feel like because they cannot see it, it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. But I want you to know that if you can't see it, doesn't mean that it's not existent, right? The brain is a part of the body. So if you're constantly in a stress um, state, meaning very anxious or very depressed, the body is going to produce natural, it's going to produce cortisol levels. And cortisol levels is going to lead to inflammation, right? And those inflammation presents physically. Um, headaches. They can have some body pain. They can have some um, brain fog, unable to concentrate. They're not able to remember stuff. They can have with anxiety, you can have abdominal pain. You can have like some little flutter, like butterflies in your stomach. I know I had that in the beginning prior to, <laughs> prior to the session, but that's okay. But always constantly being, being in that state is not okay. Um, you can have some diarrhea, you can have some constipation, you can have some headaches. So a lot of psychosomatic complaints are very evident with mental illness. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And some of the things that you say, and wow, so sometimes you may feel this way and you don't really necessarily would know what it is. So for is it possible to have mental health issues and not even know it? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. You know, a lot of people... An interesting thing is when I was doing my primary care as a nurse practitioner. Mm -hmm. So we would come in and we'd have patients complaining of the psychosomatic complaints that I mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. such as headaches. Oh, I'm not feeling good. My body, I just don't know what it is, but I just don't feel well. Um, you would order diagnostic tests, you know, like labs, exams. You're not able to pinpoint. There's no definitive diagnosis for them. So that's where mental health, when we do screening tests, like standardized screening tools, that screens for depression and anxiety, you notice that they have elevated um, scores indicated of the indicative of depression and anxiety or wow. positive screening for like a mood disorder, such as bipolar disorder. Wow. 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 That's interesting that you said that. So what are, what are some top mental health issues in maybe young adults, um, adolescents and adults? So if you're looking at both sides of the spectrum, mm -hmm. like an adult or a young person, um, and this is, you know, I may not exactly be using your lingo here, but what are some top mental health issues that you're oh. seeing, you know, based on your experience? So based on my experience and based on research studies, um, anxiety, top number one, a lot of people present with anxiety symptoms. Depression is number two. So anxiety and depression, and it cuts across the board meaning that it's just not limited to children. Um, adolescents are at prone of having anxiety and depression. Young adults are prone to developing anxiety and depression. And older adults to anxiety and depression. So anxiety and depression, number one. And number wow. two. Wow. Interesting. And another thing I wanted to, um, to ask you is sometimes kids are into themselves and they may not want to say, you know what's going on they kind of shut in and um they want to be left alone what are some warning signs for like children or adults or parents when when should you start poking like you as a parent okay you know, how does mental health you know illness begin like definitely in a child? yeah yeah so so for a child i want you to look at their school school the grades grades in school mm -hmm. um if they have some marked fall in school performance um, if they're, they don't want to go to school, you know, a child that you usually, okay, mom, I'm ready to go to school today, tells you all of a sudden, I don't feel like going to school today. They come up with some always physical symptoms. My stomach is hurting. I'm having a headache. 
Um, um, I'm just not feeling well today. Frequent physical complaints. Um, you see changes in their eating habits. Either they're eating too much or they're not even eating that much at all or eating too little. The sleep pattern is greatly affected. They're not sleeping too well or they're sleeping too much. Irritable. For children, irritability is a big, a big, one of one of the big symptoms of depression for you to say, okay, I'm noticing that something is something is wrong with this, with my child. Yeah. And, yeah. And for the younger adults, um, also irritability, irritability, they're very irritable. Um, for adolescents, they normally have frequent violent outbursts, like rages, um, decreased appetite, they don't want to eat or eating too much social withdrawal, right? They they don't want to associate with any of their friends. And it's a loss of interest. You don't want to do things that you once enjoyed in the past. Mm -hmm. So if you notice that person is not, you know, coming to any of the football games, is not attending social gatherings like they usually did in the past, then you start to suspect. And for the older parents, parents that are working, you know, you tend to call out from work. You're not going to work as usual. You notice that you're not as productive at work because you don't have the motivation to, to work. You don't have the energy. You're not able to focus. Irritable again. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And thank you for that. So in, in terms of like as a parent, as an adult, and I had this conversation with someone that even, you know, adults can be going through, you know, those depression or just not, not wanting, like you said, to do anything. Mm -hmm. So when does it go from just a regular mood swing and anger mm -hmm. to like crossed over to something else. Now, okay. I understand the spectrum may be long. It depends mm -hmm. on what it is that they may be going through or when you diagnose them, it's something mm -hmm. else. It depends on what it falls on the spectrum. Mm -hmm. But when do you know when it's, there's a shift from not wanting to do everything, not wanting to do anything, not wanting to participate in, still like a full blown, like oh. paying attention to this. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's a very good question. So when it starts affecting your activities of daily living, meaning your ability to eat, your ability to sleep, your ability to function, right? So functional impairment. So when you're not able to 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 do anything and, and the duration, Joyce, duration, you know, everyday life event, we go through that, right? We're going to go through some mood changes, you know, based on what happens on our daily daily life. Mm -hmm. But when it starts to happen daily, every single day, and as it's greater than two weeks, it's greater than a month, then there's this need for concern for them to seek appropriate intervention. Yes, yes. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yes. Wow. Um, so in our and I wanna I wanna make sure I articulate this well. In our community, Nigerian American community, we're mm -hmm. quick to say, let's pray about something. I reject that. Mm -hmm. Or you know, you know, I'm a woman of faith, mm -hmm. and I believe, I believe, believe there's nothing, absolutely nothing, God cannot do. Mm -hmm. But I should believe that God has given physicians, counselors, psychiatrists like you are, or experts like you are, um, the wisdom and the knowledge and the education to provide help to people who has mental mental health issues. Um, I believe there's a place for prayer, but sometimes we are required to also put in the work to call for help. You know, Bible says faith without works is dead, right? Mm -hmm. So as a Christian, when you have done your part of praying about the situation, when should you seek help? So oh. how do we balance the praying part uh, uh, about, a about our mental health mm -hmm. and seeking help, if that makes okay. sense? Okay, mm -hmm. so they both, I believe they both work hand in hand, right? So for many people, God is a source of comfort and strength, right? Through prayer, they enter an intimate relationship with God. They begin to feel, you know, a severe attachment. When this prayer, when this is the case, and prayer offers like some form of emotional comfort, resulting in fewer anxiety and depressive symptoms, then that's excellent, right? So I do believe that it is okay for you to pray. But when prayer is not enough and you're noticing that you're still having the symptoms, you're still having the low energy, you're still fatigued. You're still not able to have that motivation. You still have hopelessness. You have in suicidal thoughts. Just like you stated, the Bible also tells that it's okay for us to seek experts in this situation. So it is okay for you to, in addition to your spirituality, it's okay for you to go seek um, a, a psychiatrist, go seek, go seek a counselor, go seek a therapist that can help you. Because you know what I noticed, um, Joyce, a lot of people, when they have physical symptoms, like medical symptoms, 
the quick, even a common cold, you see people presenting to their primary care um, provider. It's mm -hmm. okay for them to go seek that. So they're able to pray and still say, God, I'm praying for restoration. I'm praying for strength. But in addition, they go see the appropriate management to help manage their chronic conditions, such as hypertension or diabetes. So the same should be when it comes to mental health. In addition to your spirituality, in addition to you praying that God should renew you and strengthen you and restore you to your pre-depressed or pre-anxiety state, that there are um, several alternatives that can also help you manage your mental health and mental condition appropriately. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that's that. Well, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, so I was listening to an interview, just preparing for this, and I was listening to an interview with, I think it was Lady Gaga, that I think Oprah interviewed her, and she was um, basically expressing herself about, you know, mental health, how it's, it's the biggest crisis that we have. Um, who do we really go to first? Like uh, maybe a psychiatrist, a counselor, or a PCP? How do I know who to go to first? So I realized okay. the issue. So how do I, you know, how, who do I go to first? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So usually as your first line of person that you see, and usually it's normally in the, like your primary care physician, you know, because that's who you normally regularly see for like your annual checkups, a common cold, just, if, you know how people just run to the primary care for any little thing. Mm -hmm. So your primary care physician is normally like the first contact. And Luckily now, most primary care physicians, they have screening tools that can help screen for depression and anxiety. And based on your score, you know, they can make the appropriate plan of care. They can either refer you, it depends on the severity. If it's so severe and that it's debilitating, some can actually start you on a medication and then have a referral for you to follow up with a um, psychiatrist or um, a counselor. Mm -hmm. Or either or, some people can also see a counselor first, you know, some people can go the route of a therapist, therapist. And if they notice that, you know, in addition to this therapy, the therapist notice that you're not improving, your symptoms are not being managed with just the therapy, they can recommend you to go see a psychiatrist. Right. So either or. Mm -hmm. Either or. Okay. Okay. Good. I guess that the, what I hear you say constantly is to seek help. Don't, mm -hmm. don't, if you see any of those signal, signals or any, you know, anything, uh, just basically go and seek help. Go and seek help, definitely. Seek there help. are plenty of help, plenty of people that are able to help you, plenty of modalities that we can try out. You don't have to have medications. There are natural stuff that can also help you with alleviate those symptoms that you're currently having. Yes, and there is a, there is a what, what is it, a 988 number? So what oh, is yeah. the significance of that? Oh, I am so, I'm super excited that 988 number actually came into place because now I feel like more people are just recognizing mental mental health conditions for what it is and not just saying that, oh, it's just a, a brain condition. We can't see it. They're going to be okay. Because previously in the past, there was a long number that you have to call for a suicidal prevention. So the 988 number is actually taking the place of not taking a place, but it's similar to, it's mimicking the 911 that we use for medical emergencies. And you just so dial that on your phone. Just you just dial 988 on your phone. Very quick and easy, 988. And um, you're able to um, be connected to a professional mental um, mental personnel that can help you either during the suicidal um, ideations or during um, any mental crisis. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that. Yes. Yes. That's important. So how, um, so what does mental health treatment entail? Is there a cure? How is it, is it something you can maintain? Is, does it require medication? You mentioned medication mm -hmm. at some point there. Uh, is, it a, is it a medication or, or healthy living or does one have to be on meds like for the rest of your life? Pretty okay, much. That's a very, very good question because there's no one size fit all, right? It's usually individual, it's usually excuse me, it's usually based on the individual. So right. that means that it is individualized for that patient. So typically when we have a patient come in and complain of mental, complain of like depressive symptoms or anxiety symptoms, the first thing we want to do is make sure that we rule out medical causes that can be contributing to the symptoms that this patient has happened. So once those are ruled out, the first, based on the severity, we can start psychotherapy. They normally recommend psychotherapy. And that can be in the form of just talk therapy, you know, having somebody to talk to that can help you, you know, change your 
thought process, the way that you're thinking about stuff, having um, cognitive behavior therapy, having ex doing exercises, lifestyle modification. So the severity tends to dictate um, the plan of care. So if a patient is doing well on psychotherapy, that's fine. They can continue to see a therapist and, you know, we can continue to just go from there. But a yes. patient is not doing well with therapy, they might need medication in addition to the therapy. So that's where we add medication management. And a patient, a patient also can, can um, choose to not go the medication route. Like I stated earlier, they can yes. say, okay, I want to do exercise. Exercise is another alternative, a natural antidepressant, you know, because it produces natural serotonin, natural endorphins, you feel good. So it's, it could be a combination of things such as lifestyle modification, the exercise, diet, make sure that you're not eating a lot of preservatives, make sure that you're not eating a lot of carbohydrates, wow. more protein, more That's fruits. Yeah. I know I'm, I'm guilty, especially our, <laughs> our staple, you know, Africans, um, yes. we have the rice, we have the carbohydrates. Yeah. So all those factors um, actually help to reduce um, the symptoms. Yes. Yeah. So there's no one size fit all and there's no, it all depends on the individual, the individual and situation. Yes. And is there a cure for it? So just like mental, I'm going to go back to medical. So just like a patient presenting with a chronic condition such as asthma or hypertension or diabetes, there, there are no cure per se, but we're able to manage and maintain their, their chronic conditions. So with, with, with depression, you know, some patients are able to actually get over the, their depressed state or anxiety state within a year, right? So after one year, we can slowly taper off their medication. But some people might require require this medication for lifelong. You know, it has to be like a continuous process for some. So it all depends on the individual. Individual, yes, yes. Um, these are really good. Thank you. Thank you so much for clarifying this. And you know, in terms of seeking help, um, we we believe I believe now from your explanation and just being an expert coming on the show and explaining, um, going into details what these are, what and what it, what what mental health is and what it entails. You know, I I now see I see it as a medical condition, right? So how does one find a provider? How can you access health services? Okay. This? So um, you can find a provider, again, from your PCP. PCP, your primary care physician, your pediatrician, they're able to make referrals. So seek um, a, a psychiatrist or a therapist. You can also go on um, several websites. There's Psychology Today. That's a big one that I tend to use, even when I'm seeking a therapist for my patients. Um, in addition to medication management, I'm a big, big advocate for, um, for therapy. You know, because no matter what medication you give a person, if they're not able to change their thought process or if their situation, they don't change the way they perceive their situation, mm -hmm. you know, you're not going to see effective results. Yeah. So I always direct them to psychology today. Um, you're able to actually see what the providers look like. And that's a, a plus for me, you know, especially in mental health. You want to be able to relate to somebody that, you know, that looks like you, somebody mm -hmm. that you feel like is going to understand you. So yeah. psychology today is a good one. You can just Google. Your insurance plan is a good one. It can tell you what um, psychiatrist or therapist is covered under your insurance insurance yeah. plan. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Awesome. Thank you for that. So, um, so in terms of, I know as a community though, how can we help one another? Like how can we be there for each other? You know, sometimes you don't want to share what's going on and you feel a certain way, but then you're not sure if you should, like how can, you know, our community, how can we help each other? Okay, first I'm gonna start off, you know, community is just not, it's not just the entity of group of people. It's a feeling that you feel, right? It's like mm -hmm. feeling connected to others, feeling accepted for who you are, you know, and feeling supported. So having connection helps, goes a long way when it comes to our mental health. Um, what we can do as a community to help one another is to, talk about mental health openly, what we're doing right now, bringing awareness to mental health, making sure that we know that it is, it is such, it's, it's equally as important as medical, medical health, right? Talk to those around you about how they're feeling, check on your loved ones or check on your friends, check on anybody, especially that you know, um, are prone to, to have an anxiety and or depression. Keep the conversation going. 
meaning that let's try to destigmatize all the social and cultural as aspects of mental health. And yeah. also don't leave the children out of it. You know what I notice a lot of people, oh, the children, you know, children are children are curious by nature. They want to know mm -hmm. everything. So let them know that, you know, the mental health is real and it is mm -hmm. treatable, right? The more we start at an early age, the more easy it is for us to actually, you know, curtail, yeah, can tell curtail the symptoms and to understand the conditions. Mm -hmm. And therefore we're able to actually change it, change the conversations for future generations, right? Yeah. So change it at an early age, it, it has like a trickling effect overall. Right. Now for, like you said, I know you did mention that it depends on, it's uh, specific to the individual mm -hmm. um, and it's not like one size fit, fit all. Mm -hmm. And it depends on the situation that the person is going through, then maybe health condition as well. Mm -hmm. um, what, what are some stress relieving activities that you know, maybe you can do, or that doesn't really require expense. So sometimes, you know, as parents now, uh, we work too hard. We wear so many hats. We're running all over the place. Sometimes we're really stressed. Um, I don't know if you have anything in your pocket in terms of advice, stress relief activities that you can, you know, maybe give to moms out there, fathers out there, that we could do that are not expensive or more cost effective. Yeah. Okay. So me personally. I love my alone time. <laughs> I am a mother of four, you know, so sometimes I just want to be alone. Being alone is not bad, you know. Being lonely is what is bad. Being alone is just a, a actual physical um, situation. So I like, in my being alone, I'm able to, you know, meditate, right? I'm able to have some clarity. It really helps me um, to gather and, you know, reset. It helps me also um, enjoy my hobbies. I love to shop, going shopping. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Just make sure that it's not excessively. Um, I love to um, not exercise. I'm not doing any vigorous exercise, but just simply going for a walk. That helps. Yes. Um, I love to um, enjoy the things that I do enjoy. I love, like I said, shopping, relaxation techniques, all that helps me to refocus and helps me with stress. And also socializing, you know, hanging out with a group of very, very important. We're a social being, we're not meant to be alone. Like I said, even though once in a while it's okay to be by yourself, but it's good to hang out with friends and reconnect with loved ones also. Yeah. So that has, has helped me over time. And of course, prayer, you know, mm -hmm. it's also spirituality. It helps me find a, a balance. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for that. Yeah, those are really, really good. Yes, thank you. Um, so let, let's talk a, a little bit about, you know, the stereotype around mental health and gender. Um, what has been your experience with men initiating services? You know, how can the stigma of men seeking treatment be reduced? Because sometimes we're like, oh, man, uh, no, don't say nothing. So what are, what are your thoughts about that? Yeah. Oh, oh, Joyce, <laughs> you know, men, even just to ask for direction, they find it very difficult. So, yeah. so there is the stigma <laughs> to ask for simple direction. Some men find it very difficult exactly. and to even seek medical help, you mm -hmm. know, it's like you're pulling teeth for them to go in and go get their physicals and go get checked. Um, so, you know, imagine mental health that we're yeah. just now getting starting an awareness and more people are actually knowing more about mental health. So it is very, very difficult. In my experience, I have patients just present and say, oh, I'm okay. I don't need any medication. Um, I'm just going through this and I can overcome this. I don't need medication. But I keep seeing them presenting with the same symptoms and nothing has changed. So um, areas where we can help our men is, again, education. We have to bring this to the forefront, self-awareness. Let them know that, okay, this is real, right? It's not something that you're imagining and it is treatable. Um, educational outlet, outlets, community events, um, transparency, actually representation. When they see people that looks go, that looks just like them, maybe they have more men mm -hmm. as psychologists, more men as psychiatrists. They can feel more more comfortable and more um, encouraged to go seek mental health services. But I, it is very difficult. Like I said, I have more female clients. Um, but you know, an interesting thing is, um, according to research and the WHO, who World Health Organization, um, the suicidal rate is actually higher in men as opposed to women. And but the numbers of women that present to the um, clinic setting is higher as opposed to, to to males. 
So you have more women presenting to be treated, but less less males presenting, but they have more suicidal rate. So it is there. Um, it's, we just need to seek, find ways to help destigmatize um, the men, not destigmatize the men, but destigmatize mental health. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Interesting statistics that you said there or shared there. Um, that's really interesting. Um, so for like mental health stigma in African-American community, let's talk about that a little bit. In our culture, how can we reduce or completely eliminate some of the like stereotype that comes with African-American culture and mental health, you know, seeking mental health? Yeah. Oh, wow. That's that's going to be a continuous process, you know, because <laughs> because the cultural stigma and social stigma, um, not only African-American, I've noticed it in minorities, period, like Hispanics. I've noticed Native Americans. Um, they said, oh, my family doesn't believe in mental health. I have patients that come in and say, oh, we've never, nobody has mental health, but I know a bunch of people that act the same way that I do, you know, because we don't talk about our issues stuff like that. So a way that we can help is, again, education, you know, just bringing it to the forefront, talking about it, um, transparency, representation, having culturally incompetent providers be able to provide um, services for those patients, um, having psychologists that look, again, like I said, representation that looks like them, you know, you're able to Say, oh, this person looks like me. So this person is actually able to know where I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. They're able to know that I have been through all these challenges because they look just like me. So yeah. representation is very good. And um, having competent, culturally competent providers, also excellent. And normalizing treatment for mental health issues, right? Making yeah. it more accessible to people. It is normal. It is okay. There's nothing wrong with you. Um, it is not... You know, quote unquote, this is what I hear so often. Um, it is my village people doing me. It is voodoo. It is not any mental health. That's what I hear. No, it's not. Yeah. You're probably depressed and you're likely anxious. You probably have a diagnosis of bipolar disorder or, you know, something clinically diagnosed as opposed to it's not a witchcraft. It's not none of that. And you might need to seek appropriate services. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. I uh, it's it, it's just wonderful, you know, hearing you talk about this. I love, you know, your your professional in your field, and you are. I am just super super proud of what you're doing, even with your practice and just starting up. And so, if someone wants to get in touch with you, your practice, or contact you for any help, you know, please. What are your information? How can we get a hold of you? I know you're probably very busy. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, we, you can get a hold of me. Um, I am currently located in um, Glen Burnie, to be exact. Um, Novum Wellness Center is the name of the practice. You can contact us at 443-698-8250. Again, the number is 443-698-8250 or just shoot us an email at um, yojo at novumwellnesscenter.com. And you can also Google us. I am currently on Cario on ZogDoc. You can connect with me that way. Yes, you're everywhere. I'm everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> everywhere. Um, again, you know what? Thank you so much for coming on the show. Um, I know we just had this conversation and you were like, yes, of course, you oh, know, yeah. so thank you so much for coming and to your assistant too, you know, for sending me the information. I truly appreciate you for coming. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, again, you know, to just everyone out there, I don't know if you have any last minute thing you want to say or add um, that we didn't get to, get to before we wrap up here. Um, any last minute thing, just that, you know, go ahead and continue to Seek, seek mental health if you do need it, right? There's nothing for you to be embarrassed about. There's nothing for you to be ashamed of. Um, just look at it equally as a medical health condition, mental health awareness, you know, we're, it's all out there. Um, there are several resources and several services that are out there for you, okay? Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. I know you're busy, so I'll let you go. <laughs> Again, it was thank a pleasure. You so Yes, it was a pleasure. Coming on the show. All right. Take care. Thank you. you too. Take care. All right. Bye bye. <laughs> wow. Um, it's been an interesting conversation. You know, that's all the time we have today. Thank you for also listening. I hope, you know, that conversation helped you answer some of the questions that you had about mental health, 
you know, the Bible says in the book of um, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, it says, for God did not give us the spirit of fear, but, but of power and of love and of sound mind. I pray that you receive sound mind. I pray that you receive the spirit of power, love, and sound mind in Jesus' name. You know, and then again, like she said, Dr. Yesterday said that, you know, if you feel you need help, please seek help. Please don't sit on it. Talk to a friend, talk to someone that go online. Google is your friend or even contact her. She gave our contact information. Um, and I just I just wanted to say again, thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you for listening in. You can catch up with our previous shows online on YouTube. Get Inspired Series with Joyce. We're also on social media everywhere, Instagram, Facebook. We're on Twitter as well. Same name, Get Inspired Series with Joyce. Again, thank you. Thank you so much to our special guest, Dr. Yesidi Ujo, uh, for coming on the show. And again, thank you for listening. We'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.